So I'm going to cover the topic of uh, nutrition tonight, and we'll take as long as we need. If we need to take 40 minutes and then do our practice, yoga. So we're going to review poses that are excellent for anxiety, depression, or if we end up taking the whole time, I'll go right into the focus of using uh, nutrition to help the brain, to help the body. So one thing that's become extremely um, popular, as you may be well aware of, is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is, for some people, um, a really good way for clearing the brain, clearing the mind, clearing the digestive tract. So for a woman doing 14 hours off of food and then coming back, um, so for example, I do from approximately 9 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night, because I tend to eat late, it helps me sleep. Um, and then I eat again the next day, anywhere from 1 p.m., around sometimes 12 noon, so sometimes I go 16 hours. It's just an accidental thing that I started. Um, I do find that it really helps with clearing the mind, clearing the gut, um, so there's regularity. So I have found that intermittent fasting has been good. My thing, my mood disorder, so to speak, is anxiety. I'm a very nervous person. So it took a while for me to kind of migrate into the intermittent fasting, but it was all just because of timing. I do my practice, I teach quite strongly until about noon, and so having an empty stomach felt really great. And I had a clear mind because I didn't have any problems when I was bending and twisting and all the getting upside down and all those things that require a really empty stomach. So it was really just because I was teaching yoga or doing my practice until noon or one that I started intermittent fasting. So was it inspired by lifestyle as opposed to the trend? And then the trend of intermittent fasting came and I realized I was intermittent fasting, but I hadn't thought of it. People would always say, oh, you're not eating lunch? And then I'll say, oh yeah, I'm just not hungry yet. So I would eat when I was hungry, whether it was 12 noon or 2 p.m. or sometimes 3 p.m. Um, so the intermittent fasting, with everything to do with eating, may I humbly, honestly, humbly suggest, please do what's inspired. We're gonna continue to have trends in food. Your body is not a trend. If it's hard for you to go for a long period without food and to fast, don't do it. If it causes anxiety, if it causes a hard time concentrating, which are the main challenges, then don't do it. If you're finding it's helping your body, but you're having a hard time doing it, okay, like hard time, like, wow, I'm really hungry. But if you're anxious and it's hard to focus and continue in the world, then I would say this is not the time to uh, attempt to change, make, make changes in your dietary eating habits. So really, the key with nutrition is listening to your body. The body will give you so many signals about whether the foods that you're eating are working. And so you can do, um, you could do a cleanse, say for a clearing of, of very uh, like soups and just liquids for 24 hours and then just clear the system and then start to add foods in. So that's one way to do it. But you probably need to do that for three days of just lightly um, like soups, uh, clear soups, maybe bone broths, if you're capable of doing that for two to three days to clear the body and then start to add foods in to see if it's agreeing with your system and having smaller portions so that you can test each food. Does this make sense? So you're starting with a clear, a clear system and adding in. So that would be if you're finding that you're really wondering if what you're eating isn't working, like you're really confused or you, again, you really want to start with a clean slate and doing three days of clearing the system would be good and then start to add stuff in. Um, the, uh, the brain needs carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is glycogen. So carbohydrates, I think people often think muffins and bread, but carbohydrates are bro broccoli and asparagus and cauliflower. Those are the complex carbohydrates. Um, amaranth is a very good grain, as is quinoa. They're high in protein. So they're ones that vegans will use in order to get their protein as well as vegetarians. Vegans don't have dairy, they don't have uh, uh, egg, uh, dairy, uh, eggs. Um, so they have completely, all their protein is coming from plant-based food. So there's many um, advantages to this. Somebody who has high blood pressure, for example, would, would gain from having a, a more plant-based diet. Um, Many people find that there's too much planning with it to have a plant-based diet or it's just not going to work because their family members are not going to, you know, they're not in that or their relationship isn't, their marriage is not even plant-based. Um, I've been in that position where my husband at the time, 
you know, was like French and very French and red wine and steak and all of that. So I just made two meals and it wasn't that big a deal. So when I made the veg, I made a lot of veg and then I added quinoa to the salad or a boiled egg because I do eat eggs fresh from the farm. So I do eat dairy. I'm just going to add this in because it might be helpful. I do eat dairy and I just only eat um, no fat yogurt. I know it's modified. It's just that if I have, if I eat no fat yogurt, I get more protein and I'm always needing more protein because I eat a lot of veg. Um, so I eat no fat yogurt, preferably Greek because it's really high in protein. I can get 17 to 25 grams of protein and you want to go for a high protein content. I'm jumping into many places here when you're eating because now this is quite new. The science shows it's better to eat a lot of protein um, than to have five or eight or 10 grams. So a decent serving of protein is around 20 grams and up, 20 to 30. You probably wouldn't get past 30. You'd probably be pigging out if you got more than 30, <laughs> like a giant steak, 10 ounce of the cake or something like that. So um, going for low fat, um, high protein is more digestible. You're going for the good fats. Um, so dairy, if I had like a, a high fat uh, dairy, that's the bad fats. Whereas the, the good fats are going for things that are uh, omega-3, um, avocados. And I know probably you have an understanding of this, but keeping the uh, bad fats out and keeping in the good fats. This is all in the handout that I sent you, by the way. So I have it here printed if you'd like a copy. And then I also have um, the, P the uh, attachment sent to you by the email. Um, and I kept it very brief just to get straight to the points. So um, something that can happen with having more uh, a nervous disposition or sensitized, um, experiencing things more, uh, is you might, it might affect the blood pressure. So I put in the notes in there about blood pressure, um, cutting, how to cut out foods that are high in fats. So again, we're going into meats. I mentioned dairy already. Um, eggs um, straight from the farm are very good. It's a lot easier to get them now. You can get them at the carrot, the big carrot. Um, and if you know anybody that lives in the country, check them out and see if they can recommend somebody because getting them from the country, I get them every Tuesday and I buy for people if I can. And they're $5 for a dozen. They could be $10 in Toronto. They could be seven. So it is quite a bit higher. Plus there's more travel. The farms that you get, or straight from the farm, you're getting more nutrition. So the, the, the eggs in the store are graded, you know that? Mm -hmm. So grade A, and they could be there for two weeks. That's why when you get them from the farm, the yolks are so yellow, it's fresher. And for example, if you get them from St. Lawrence Market or one of the markets, that, that day, that's, that's required at a market. It has to be the same day. So we're talking the chicken blade, though. Sometimes they're warm, <laughs> depending what? on the year. <laughs> like it's that, it's that good. And uh, so the, I can even express the difference between eggs from a farm and, and from the store. So again, you can get it from the big carrot. I also realize that what I'm running off about at the mouth is very expensive. So sometimes it's like, you know, so that's a really great idea to have eggs that are organic, that are fresh from the farm, that aren't graded, but I don't have any access. So if I can just plant some seeds, um, because maybe then you'll meet somebody. Um, we actually had the Mennonites um, delivering, we had an egg depot here years ago, and um, maybe I could set it up again because the eggs do not have to be in the fridge for two weeks, depending on how old they are. They can sit on your counter because they don't actually need refrigeration when they're fresh. Um, you know, you don't see chickens putting them in the fridge. You know, like yeah. they, can, they can be out of the fridge. Um, so eating foods that are uh, as close to uh, when they've been made is better. Um, so you'll hear the 100 mile diet idea. So with the foods that are fresher, Foods that are food, so not in a package. I know my daughter loved chicken nuggets, you know, and um, and my, my grandson does, but we, we really try to make them. So as much as you can, um, non-packaged foods. There is a lot of food delivery services. Um, I use uh, Green Zebra, um, quite affordable, and I think it might cost me $100 to have all my meals for the week. I haven't been using it because I would make my own meals, but I use it if I have somebody staying here and they need meals. Um, so there are a lot of, as you know, food delivery services now, and they're gluten-free, they're organic, they're fresh, good foods. 
So there's many people that are making foods, and I actually have some personal friends that are making them, and I can find out how, if they're at saturation with orders. So we're, it, we're living in a really good time to live healthy, because we can go to a restaurant and we can look at it, and now it doesn't just show us like three hot peppers and say it's hot, it's showing like vegan, um, uh, heart smart, you know, we've got all of these options now. So we're living at a really good time to be vegetarian or healthy, um, or again, low fat. So low fat of the bad fats, very important for the brain, um, very important for the gut. When there's anxiety or depression, the body's gut is affected. This is referred to as the enteric brain. And I very briefly talk about the enteric brain in my book. Basically, it's a nervous system that's more in tune with you than your nervous system, than your spinal column going up to the brain, which is where your nervous system is. Um, it's, they've proven now that you feel more from here than you do from here. So when you're, um, when you're upset, how and whether you digest the food that you just ate or whether it sits there will be a, a, a big factor. So stress will really affect digestion. Um, everything okay? Any mm -hmm. questions so far? Okay. Um, so uh, digesting, giving your body time to digest, movement a couple of hours after food is really helpful with digestion. So walking, just moving around. So um, sometimes eating late at night can be hard for people. I personally do it because I have to eat late at night or I don't sleep through. This is kind of a menopausal thing that's been going on for 10 years. And it's a bummer, but I need to eat a lot at night. So I actually brought up one thing that I use, which is tahini, which is pure ground sesame seeds. Um, tahini is delicious. And um, uh, you can, it's almost like caramel when you put it on things, which I'll show you, because I'm going to show you it on my dual dates. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. snack. Um, there are so many delicious snacks. Like if you dip a sliced apple in tahini, it is like, what we had at the retreat, it was like havalava or whatever they said, that, you know, that Greek dessert. It's delicious. So fresh fruits um, with, um, you can have frozen blueberries, wild blueberries are quite inexpensive from Costco, for example. Um, uh, having that uh, in your yogurt, frozen blueberries, and then they thaw, very good. And wild blueberries are excellent for um, uh, omegas. Um, they're one of your best, one of your better choices. Berries are very, very good. They're lower in sugar. Um, so raspberries, strawberries, all berries, um, which you can get frozen and you can get organic. Um, organic is important when you can't afford it. Excellent. Um, still go for fruits and vegetables. And, um, and then just kind of notice where maybe you have some options. Like sometimes no frills have really good organic sales on their broccoli, their cauliflower. They have always a really good sale on peppers. So, you know, red and uh, yellow and uh, orange peppers. Um, if you eat from the Nightshade family, um, they have really good prices there. And my grandson eats a ton of peppers, so we're always buying them from no frills because they're so much cheaper. Um, and they are pretty fresh. Um, so, keeping the caloric intake Steady sometimes will help a lot with mood regulation. So sometimes people need to eat smaller meals and, and eat three to five times a day. It, um, is that anything that you guys recognize? I snack, but yeah, three meals a day. Three meals a day, so yeah. keeping the blood sugar level more steady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my lunches could be smaller. They're almost nap inducing. <laughs> Eating a lot causes tiredness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that is that is accurate. Okay, um, so notice if you need to keep the blood sugar level steady in order to help the mind, in order to help the brain. So really know yourself. And then there is a sister science called Ayur Ayurveda. It's the sister science to yoga. It's kind of like the eating aspect of yoga, and they talk about three types of bodies. Three doshas are called. And um, so that would be something that you could just Google. It's a huge topic. It's a science um, that doctors, Ayurvedic doctors in India and, and in Europe and here in Toronto, we have a huge Ayurvedic, uh, uh, not, she's not a huge doctor, but she's a fantastic doctor and has a center here. They've run a retreat uh, thing here. Um, Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. It, 
it's um, basically saying, okay, your vata pitta, which is kind of high, strong, and a lot of energy and nervous, whereas maybe your vata, I'm sorry, pitta kapha. Kapha is kind of like um, easygoing. Um, they're, you know, they're really laid back. It's hard for them to get moving. Um, and they, they tend to be docile, uh, so opposite of somebody that has a very high strong, which is pitta, pitta and vata. And um, so somebody that's pitta and vata, for example, in the winter, um, they would gain from roasting, cooking their apples, like having roasted apples instead of raw, because they would digest better. So there's during the seasons, we have different food effects. I don't know if you've noticed this. Hmm. Again, I'll just share that as you get more sensitized, your body needs foods that work. And so it might be difficult to digest raw in the winter. Um, raw was, do you remember when raw came out? It was a big thing, raw diets, big deal. Mm -hmm. It was, it came out of Southern states. Okay, let's be clear, California. And so there's people that eat just raw and I've, I've lived with them. I've met many people. Um, so they're eating raw vegetables. Um, and that, that's what they do. And usually they sneak a coffee in in the morning. And, um, and they just, you're getting really high nutrients. But some people can't digest it. So I have to go to, I, I literally the day it got cold this year, uh, my salads, which I love raw, I was, I was steaming my vegetables that night because I, I could just feel I just needed something warm. It makes sense. So there's a sensibility to our gut. There's a sensibility to how we eat that can be overlooked in the industry out there that says eat raw or eat vegan, or and maybe you can't eat vegan. Um, maybe you need to have um, meat. Um, for example, uh, white meat, so to speak, tr uh, chicken, turkey, is high in tryptophan. And you, you, you might have heard of tryptophan. Tryptophan is like um, uh, turkey. So uh, you have, it's an amino acid that helps to relax you, and this is all in the handout. And so you can get that in, in again, white meat, so to speak, uh, chi uh, poultry and, um, and turkey. However, chicken is higher in tryptophan than turkey. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, it, chicken's gonna get a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And if you like chicken, I'm gonna introduce you to where I get my chickens. <laughs> Cause it's delicious. And I started roasting whole chickens and I bought a roasting pan and the house is amazing when you roast it. And, and I just put all my veg in, oh my goodness, is that good? And then you've got a meal for a week, for example. And I think it might be $40 for a large chicken. And they're, um, it's from a Mennonite farm that, that uh, one of my students um, runs. And they, they do provide some of the restaurants up in the Danforth and they, they have a full-fledged business that they donated their land to the Mennonites and they have a full-fledged chicken farm. So anyways, I started eating chicken because of their chickens. Um, so although we have to wash for antibodies and, and eat organic, there are inexpensive ways to find it. And we have fantastic farm to table veggie bo boxes that you can get delivered to your door. Um, those are like, for example, in August, you, you, you will get kale like this. <laughs> I had one of my students um, contact me and go, Celeste, tell me you're juicy. Cause she brought me like, cause her box was just filled with kale you know, and, and carrots and other things, but there was a lot of kale that week on the farm. So if you're getting a box, it's not like, oh good, I'll get all this variety. No, you might get a lot of something. So you need, need to be honest and real, like it's a farm, right? And you're gonna get what's harvested. So very affordable, cool because you're supporting a farmer. And let's say you pay, I don't even know, it's quite affordable, 400 a year um, or $30 a box. I know that's what it was when I was getting it. And then you, you, you commit and then you've got this regular um, delivery. And then the farmers don't need to go and sell to uh, <coughs> the food depot down on Front Street and get less money um, and wonder when the customer will get it. Um, they get to share their fresh food. So it's quite a cool way to participate in farm service. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, <laughs> there's a particular term for it, but it's any, any, veg, any food box from a farm. So if you just Google food box from a farm, I used to, uh, Par oh, Paradise Fields does it now. Um, they're out in Hamilton, and I believe they're coming to Toronto. Um, so they're, they're a cool place. Um, yeah, there's quite a few. So if you do uh, home delivery of, uh, from farms and boxes, then you'll get it, because there's quite a few now. There used to be just a few. 
Um, watching portion control will help because if you get slovenly or you get, you know, you feel heavy from the food, then that might cause you to feel like hard on yourself, depressed. Um, I know for me that's the big thing, overeating. Like I've really got to watch that. That'll that'll super affect how effective I feel. And on. Um, let me just see. Is there any questions at this point? Um, so eating a variety of foods is extremely helpful. Um, eating complex carbohydrates again is your vegetables or your good grains. Gluten gluten free does really help with digestion. Again, we're living at a good time to get gluten-free. You can even get gluten-free sourdough. I can tell you the bakery, one of my students brought it, and I bought that last week because I never eat uh, bread, so that was a real treat. Um, so there is a lot of gluten-free out there, at, even at all the major stores, all the major supermarkets you can get it. Costco, Loblaws, Foodland, all the places have it now. It is more expensive. Let me tell you, eating healthy is expensive. <laughs> And yet, if you talk to the manager at Karma Co-op, and which is, by the way, Karma Co-op is at Bathurst and Bloor, it is probably the only place in the whole world where we should be sh should should be shopping. It's very little packaging. They are doing all farm to table, so the politics is exceptional there. Um, except uh, it would it would cost you'd be paying for pure organic. Just like going to the carrot, everything is pure organic. You can't get anything on non-organic in there. Um, their, their food policy is the most scrupulous I've ever seen. And they have things there that are, like if you if you wanna go for a tour at Karma Co-op, please go, I'll take you. I'll, I'll set up a group. The politics of eating there is the best that you can get that I know of in Toronto. Um, so it's like, uh, like I said, uh, I do farm to table, theirs is all farm to table, so it's exceptional. Um, so eating foods, just straight up foods, nothing out of the package is gonna give you way more nutrition. Um, I've even seen in the supermarket, this scared me, I was at the um, fitness, uh, uh, fitness show, Fit, Ken Fit Pro, they had boiled eggs in a package. Like it was, I don't know, it was like Kellogg's or something. You bought, you bought your boiled eggs in a package because who was trying to boil eggs? Oh my God. Okay, so this is what's happening, right? I mean, we have microwavable food. We have all these things. And what's that saying? You know, what's that saying about our life and about our bodies and what we're willing to do? So as much as you can, fresh foods, um, portion control, knowing when you need to eat, knowing if intermittent fasting will help. I've been quite delighted to see how, not because I'm for intermittent fasting, I'm, I'm indifferent, um, how many people are telling me that it's been really effective for them. Delighted because they found a routine that worked. So again, know yourself, give it a try. If, if this is something that, what I find is, um, Marina will say something to me and there's like something inside that'll go ding, like it'll match what she knows. And I'll think, oh, I wanna check that out. Um, so if I'm saying intermittent fasting, there's something you're going, yeah, I've been wondering about that my gut's been, and you, and you, just, if there's anything that I say and it's like, oh, it registers as accurate, then give, consider that. And if I say something, you think, not a chance, you know, um, really listen to your body. So if somebody says to you, you know, um, you really need to cut out gluten and dairy and you're miserable, <laughs> then now's maybe not the time. Maybe have a little bit more digestion to do, but it feels right. So it's it's really important to be inspired by how you're eating. And we were talking earlier about um, uh, having alcohol. So notice if it really affects you. So you're going into the center of the brain, you're going to the pineal gland hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is food regulation. So hypothalamus tells you um, you're hot. And often when you're hot in the summer, you won't be hungry, by the way. I've always thought one of the best things for weight loss would be to have a hat that's heated. <laughs> so if people are you know, trying to reduce their caloric intake, um, which is such a bummer. Dieting is awful, and yet it's 90% of most health profiles. 90%. And I would say it's 90% for what we're addressing, feeling anxiety and depression. It's 90%. So instead of dieting, like restricting, and by the way, diet originally in the 1860s, back when I was a girl, um, 
they, it meant um, a day's journey. It actually meant what your consciousness was taking in. So what you, what poetry you were in, writing, or what you, it's what you took in. It had nothing to do with restriction. Um, so the best diet, what you're taking in, is um, foods that work for you, foods that you love, foods that you enjoy, foods that taste good. You will actually be more satisfied when you eat something that tastes good, really good. So um, let's say, for example, you go to a movie and get a large popcorn and you get cheese on or whatever, and it's like so good, you got no protein. You're gonna come out of there and you'll be like an hour and why am I so hungry? I just ate so much food. But the body didn't get the nutrients. So the brain, the hypothalamus goes, hello, protein, excuse me. And it will not uh, cause the satiation. It will actually send out a hunger response. I know people say that about Chinese food, but it's actually about mm -hmm. protein, fats, good fats, and carbohydrates. So we have the three food groups. Those are the macro nutrients. Um, we need about 20% protein. So, um, and it could be 25%. And now the latest science is really saying, please get your protein, because sometimes people will go easily low, low to 15%. Um, if you're exercising, it's not that you need that much more, it's just that the brain needs protein. So again, I would go for 20, possibly 25% of your diet as protein. And how do you know that? It's really easy now. You could write down your foods, and then you could plug them into a food calculator, and it will say, okay, how much food, how much you got in protein, and how much you got, and there's apps that are very useful um, that are quite inexpensive or free. So that's really good. I used one for a while, and it was exceptional. I just don't use apps, so I didn't keep it up. Um, so you're looking at uh, about 10 to 20% fats, and the rest is carbohydrates. So you're looking at about 55 to 60% carbohydrates. Please try to get a lot from vegetables. Um, green vegetables that you steam uh, are high in calcium. So uh, uh, collards, for example, are quite high in calcium. So I wrote down that calcium, magnesium, um, uh, calcium, magnesium, very important minerals for uh, helping the mind. And um, I thought if it's helpful, I have a chart here of the foods that are, are quite helpful for helping with anxiety and depression. So I didn't know if you had your phone and you want to take a picture of that chart, and I'm going to read from it. Um, so what, what, some of the main things, the foods that help is, um, I mentioned tryptophan, so getting it from poultry and from um, uh, turkey, and let me just go through the other nutrients here. So that's the chart right there, foods that are your food arsenal. So foods high in calcium include broccoli, cooking greens, so collards, um, dairy products. And, oh sorry, there's a typo in there. Um, foods high in magnesium, amaranth, avocados, sunflower seeds, wheat germ. This is all in the, in the handout. Um, wheat germ is kind of cool because you can sprinkle it into stuff. So into salads, you can, you can make your salad dressing thicker. Um, you could into a cereal if you have oatmeal in the morning or something. Please try to have real cereal. Please try to have. Um, oh, I, cere cereals are too damn tempting, and I think they turn into a late night snack. Is that true? I think they they just turn into something, and they've got so much just added to them. Granola ones. Yeah. Oh my goodness. As a snack. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the granolas are nasty high yeah. in sugar, like bad sugar. Um, Sugars, if you're having sugar, your best one and most expensive um, is uh, maple syrup. It's high in zinc as well. And um, then your next one is unpasteurized honey, so just pure honey. And it's high in selenium, nails and hair and skin. Oh, and immunity. So you, get, you actually get the local immunity. So um, we have a um, woman here who has an apothecary and she um, always brings honey. I eat a lot of honey, easily, easily a heaping tablespoon a day. I have it in my matcha tea. Um, matcha is very good for um, par the gut. Matcha uh, moving, it's a, it's a green tea, it's a powder, it's very strong. Um, I highly recommend getting it from a bulk food store. 
um, better bulk on the gold work. They're sorry, strictly bulk. They have the best price in Ontario. Um, uh, so matcha's is a, a high in antioxidants, very good for the gut. And because sometimes, um, so these are all things I've just gleaned and pulled together over the last 20 years. Um, I guess I haven't had coffee for three years, I've lost track. I'm, oh, I'll have it now and then, but I, I just really prefer matcha. Um, matcha so has no caffeine, right? It has about 10% oh. of the other. Now I have a heaping tablespoon, because I, I just really like a thick, I make a matcha latte with a soy beverage and coconut milk. Of all the milks, now I'm just jumping into general nutrition, coconut is the best. Mm -hmm. It's the best one. Um, if you're having uh, cow milk, if you can have, um, you, if you can get, sometimes you can get raw, I can tell you a source, um, or uh, organic, please try if you can. And then lactose free if you need to, I bought that for someone yesterday because they need that. So you can get lactose free organic milk now. You can get everything. Again, price is higher and you're supporting your body. What I started to say was at Karma Co-op, we went for a tour there during Jane Walks in Toronto. Do you guys know about Jane Walks? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a fantastic. It's three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Jane Jacobs is a real actionist in Toronto. She moved up from New York. Mm -hmm. And she stopped the Spadina Freeway from going through the annex. She's really cool. I have her book, I haven't read it yet upstairs, that one of my students loaned me. And they have Jane Walks once a year. Mm -hmm. So you go to different areas of Toronto. The biggest seller was Ontario Place last year because that was when uh, Ford was trying to turn it into a spa. Um, it's gonna be a spa. Yeah, so that was a big attendance mm -hmm. for that. Um, so uh, Jane walked, so we went to Karma Co-op and the manager told us, he said, I know people are like, you know, it's really expensive food. It's really gone up since the pandemic. He said, do you know that worldwide we spend, we spend the least amount on food based on our whole income when you do a pie chart? So he said, although we might think we're spending a lot, it's nothing. And he told us the amount that other countries are spending, and it was something like 60% of their income. What? Yeah, I wish I had written down exactly where he was talking about. So I remember suddenly realizing, I do eat really good food, and I do, I'm willing to spend money on it, but yet I'm single. don't have like a family of 12. Um, and um, I just, I really liked hearing that statistic, that we're not spending as much as other countries. Um, so, uh, portion control, um, it's true what they said about getting a lot of different colors on your plate. That does mean that you're getting different vitamins and minerals, which makes perfect sense. Um, zinc, important, vitamin C. Um, I talked about magnesium. Uh, magnesium is a relaxant. It's very good to, uh, to help. So um, I mentioned what's high in that, and B6, food's high in B6. That helps with, with serotonin and other good hormones, melatonin. So um, B6, B6, ladies and gentlemen, it goes right to, it breaks the blood brain barrier, so it goes right in. Bananas, potatoes, salmon. So um, I eat a rude amount of bananas. I, I, I didn't even realize until I looked this up that I, I must have started for that reason because I use a Vitamixer and I make ice cream and I'm really happy to show you how to do this. Vitamixers are another thing that I don't know if you can do without. They could be $7,000, but I think they're down to, sorry, $7,000, $700. I can't believe I said that. Um, that's an old car, a used car. Um, a Vitamixer is a heavy duty um, blender that, does anybody have a Vitamixer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, how, and how long have you had it? Um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a couple of years. But, but my husband had one previous to that um, and used it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You might have it for 50, 70 years. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. This was just, he took it to work and somebody took it. So that's why we had to get a new one. Oh, I mean, right. it was still going. So, yes. I mean, and it was old and it was still going. Yeah. So you can't have it for a very long time. It's an incredible product. Mm -hmm. The motor is super strong. Apparently, yes. at the food show at the CNE, they grind lumber. I don't think you need to do that. Um, though you can grind anything. So anyways, you can freeze bananas, so you put them in the freezer. Um, and then I use an egg base, raw eggs, so I put three raw eggs in, probably about seven bananas, real cinnamon, Ceylon, um, uh, 
cashew, which I also keep in the freezer because it makes it very creamy. And then I push it, push it, push it down, and you've got instant ice cream. My grandson, everybody loves it. And then if you drizzle tahini on top of that, oh my God, it's incredible. <laughs> We're talking serious nutrients, serious protein, good fats. And that's generally my, if I didn't eat all day, it's all ground up and it's ice cream and I'll eat that before bed. So that's something that I've been doing for, I don't even know, probably 25 years. I just know that when people come up and go, you make nice food. So <laughs> <laughs> even children. So, and you know, it's so cool to give somebody food and go, oh, this is like, I personally know the cows that I eat my yogurt from, Saugeen Farms in Ontario. I've met them. I know the chickens that I eat my, I eat my eggs from, and my, my eat that I eat the chickens. <laughs> I know the farm there. It's really cool when you're when you're you're making food. I don't know the bananas, but I did find out that at Karma Co-op, there's a guy in Ontario making bananas all year, and I'm so gonna get to Karma Co-op. I just I just don't feel like traveling anymore. Um, but they're bana again, they're, so bananas, imagine local bananas, way higher in nutrients. And if you know this from picking an apple off a tree and eating it, or mm -hmm. an orange in Florida, like, come on, you can't even compare. Mm -hmm. And if you, you don't even want to know the science of how much of the iron and the nutrients are gone by the time it gets to your mouth when it's been shipped. It's frightening. I, I watched a presentation on that once and I was like, I wish I didn't know. Like clearly you almost don't want to ever go to no frills or Loblaws or buy food because it's just like, it's just, it's really hard how much of the nutrients are gone. So the more you can get fresh, the more you can go to farmer's markets, um, the better it is. And then I'm just going to say this and I don't know if I can because I don't know if it's accurate, but it just occurred to me that all the people that I know that go to farmer's markets or to the farm and get their foods because they can, or eat organic, they're, they're, they're really invested in themselves. And then I know a lot of people are like, Celeste, what you get at the farm for those frozen blueberries like this, I can get like this at Costco. And there's, there's this bottom line, you know, this like, you know, like I'm saving so much money and I'll just, I'll just say it. It's very, it's a very patriarchal mindset. It's a very, uh, you know, money and, and, and the idea of spending more on food when you can get it so cheap on sale at no frills, excellent. It's just that um, the, the friends, the people, and the people that I know that, that don't go for that and they go for the nutrient quality, it's a completely different genre. It's a completely different population. So if you're able to make these choices, you know, sometimes you can't because you're in a family, um, then um, just see, see what can happen, you know? Um, don't do anything because you're supposed to or because anybody says so. Um, again, if anything I say is striking a chord and you're thinking, oh, wow, yeah, I've always wanted to just do that or try that, then there's your, your go-to. Um, I'm really here to help when it comes to food because, I, as I said, I've, I've found all the sources of food and where I get them. And some of it is no-frills and some of it is Costco. And I guess 80% I guess of it is farms and places. Um, so I mentioned about blood pressure. Blood pressure is referred to as a silent killer because you don't know you have high blood pressure, although a lot of people do, they sense it. And it can lead to um, serious problems with your health. And most people, when they think of high blood pressure, they think of really stressed or overweight. I have a client who was hospitalized, sent to the hospital, um, just blood pressure went crazy. So just watch your blood pressure. You know, you have so many places to check it now at the drugstore and places. So you know, keep, keep track of your blood pressure. Um, and what I do is I write it down after every checkup, if it's once a year. And uh, physicians will say, well, your blood pressure goes higher as you get older. Remember that physicians are trained in generic health, generic population. The general person is not healthy. They're not health conscious. They don't tend to exercise consistently or eat as well as we are talking about. So when, a, when you hear from a physician making just a general statement, because I noticed my blood pressure is a little higher, she's like, yeah, Celeste, you're 60, like you're older. I was like, yeah, that's no reason. So then I, you know, I looked at my food. <laughs> I looked at my stress level and the answer was clear. I wasn't sleeping, which I haven't been this year. And finally that's changing, which I could tell you about, which I think is work. But I, I would like to hear about that. Yeah. 
Um, I, uh, because testosterone and estrogen and progesterone go down during um, uh, menopause, so I'm, I've been, I stopped when I was 47, so it's been 13 years. Um, and I just stopped for some reason, and uh, which I think I know, but um, uh, I started, I, I'm a big advocate of weight training. Um, I started weight training when I was 13, so it's been a while. Um, I think only two years I didn't weight train consistently, and it was during the beginning of menopause. It felt hard. It felt hard. My body was very sensitive, and I needed to do dance, walking, running, yoga, some strong yoga, so I got the weight bearing. Um, but uh, I started weight training consistently three days a week. I was pretty consistent before, but now I'm not missing. And I'm doing something that apparently raises the testosterone level. It's very straightforward. Six sets of 10 repetitions with two minutes in between. So what does that mean? If you're doing squats, and even if you're doing body squats, you do 10 reps, but you wanna be at exhaustion by 10 reps. This is the key for weight training. A lot of people don't know this. If you do weight training, it's like, yeah, you do weight training. No, the last repetition means to be almost impossible. And although we don't do that at 6.30 in the morning class, Ava, we do higher reps, but we go for the burn. You wanna go for the burn or to the last possible thing that you can do. So let's say you're in plank, because that's weight bearing, and you stay in plank until you're like, you're, you're gonna plop, it's, can you go a few couple more breaths? The more you build your stamina, the more there's positive stress on the muscles and the bones and the connective tissue testosterone comes in and it does the repairs of the micro tears so you get little tiny micro tears and the reason that's good is if you look at this piece of bamboo this is exactly what a muscle fiber looks like it blows my mind it's called anyway, it doesn't matter but it's called a sarcomere and it has a whole bunch of fibers like strands of spaghetti and um, what happens is they go like this. They slide over each other, so sliding filament theory. And what happens is when you put weight training and you really weight train, they get little tiny tears. Not because they're pressed against each other. That's outside. The weight's outside. But it's just that they tense so much and they pull so much and they pull so hard because you're really pulling the body's end points, the terminal points, and you're lifting or you're pushing, so push or pull. And the body's going, okay, okay. And it's stressing, but it's positive stress. It's not like, like you're um, under duress and there's cortisol levels. It's positive stress. It's called eustress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. -E -S -S. And so the body adapts. And so if you keep doing this, body goes, you're just doing it again. <laughs> so it keeps, it keeps tightening the muscles and going, okay, she's not stopping. So they keep tightening the muscles. If your muscles are thicker, so let's say you gain one pound of muscle, your metabolism goes up by 50 calories. That's not a lot, that's a small apple. However, um, your testosterone level goes up. So when you're lying around, your metabolism is higher, testosterone is higher, this could help with sleep. All I know is I've slept for eight days now and I'm a new person. <laughs> um, and I've been doing the weight training for consistently, maybe it's been three weeks, maybe a month. And all I know is um, I love the feeling again of returning to the consistent training, but when your muscles feel toned, you feel different, your metabolism is higher, your, your posture is different, you wear different clothes, you wear your favorite color. There is a way that you feel in, in the body that's bigger, that's more here. And your metabolism is higher. And for women, if our testosterone goes down and we don't rebuild it by demanding it to come into the bloodstream from weight training or heavy something, you could do strong walking, hiking, um, then the testosterone will go down and your muscles will shrink atrophy as will the osteoplasts, the bone density. So you need to have weight training to pull the muscles on the bones, and this will really increase your density. So weight, yes? My doctor recently told me that you cannot um, increase your bone density. Is that true or not? What's your take on that? Um, that's a really thorough question. Um, I would say, that could be accurate from the testing, so your bone density isn't up. I don't know the answer. I do know that at the ends of your bones, the tendon, the ligaments attach. If they're stronger, they're going to be pulling more on the bone, and that may give it a little bit more. Um, bones aren't hard. They just seem that way because the way you see skeletons. But it might give the bone a little bit more pliability. I think it would give the bone more pliability. And I wonder who I could ask to find that out. I'll see who I can. So, um, yes, 
your bone density might not increase. However, if your mobility is high and everything is moving well, mm -hmm. then the bones are gonna move well. Okay. So soft tissue, muscle, tendons, ligaments, that's why you got muscles, tendons, ligaments. Ligaments are bone to bone. Tendons are the end of the muscle attached to the, to the bone. Sorry, um, yeah, attached to the bone. Whereas uh, ligaments are bone to bone. So knees, elbows, um, mostly everything else is tendons. So if you keep them at, um, full of blood supply, which is what exercise does, then you're gonna help your bones. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I understand that that's believed. Um, so let me look at the literature for that to see if you can increase your bone density by weight training or heavy training. So heavy training could be doing lunges. Heavy training could be doing big arm circles and then coming up and pushing and pushing and isolating the tricep and the shoulder, so arm work. Um, yeah, so weight training is, is the highest form of bone density increasing. Um, Ava, up until the age of 35, we're creating our calcium bank. And then after 35, we're kind of using a lot of what's there. You can still increase it, but it mostly gets established, if you will, up until the age of 35 in the bones. So we attempt to eat well until 35, and then after that we attempt to eat well, we just might have helped ourselves a lot. I just remember eating a bucket of calcium up until 35, feeling like a bank. <laughs> kind of go, okay, 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 more, more broccoli, okay, more almonds. <laughs> um, you know, and it's neat to know all these things. I, I hope it doesn't feel overwhelming. I hope it feels like, oh, okay, um, that's neat. Because when it comes to our health, there's so much fear-mongering and people are talking more about symptoms and, um, and no one talks about chronic wellness. <laughs> you know, they talk about chronic illness or acute illness or acute injury or chronic injury, um, overuse injury. But very few people say, yeah, I'm like chronically well. Like, yeah, you know, there's a lot that's really working. And if you actually noticed that, you might not be bothered by the rest. I've seen this with my mother who's 90. She just won't talk about the, the, the crappy stuff. She just, she just keeps walking. Good for her. Yeah, it's just that's what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And she's not being sunny and she's not being inaccurate and dishonest. She, she talks about things that hurt, but she doesn't. That's it. She talks about it so that then I'll address it or the doctor will, and then, then that's it. The rest of the day it's over because that's not going to help. And that is probably the biggest part of our life right there is... What we're, what we're thinking and what we're choosing in that moment. Mm -hmm. What our mind is on is what we're creating. Um, I'm just gonna stop the video.